Hey there, Pragmaticians. This is Alex from the Alex Cast. I wanted to let you know that I have a brand new book out. It's called The Terravada Machine and Other Stories. It's got a whole bunch of strange esoteric topics in it. And there's one about the Mandela Effect. I think you guys are going to really like it. So please search for Alex Bolin on Amazon.com, or you can go to AlexBolin.com if you want a direct link. That's A-L-E-X-X-B-O-L-L-E-N.com. That's The Terravada Machine and Other Stories. Hold on. Watching the video, that's Zara. Zara. Got a special episode for you today. Um, you know, this podcast has always been about the creation of your own folklore, of your own mythology, and I couldn't ask for a better example than Eric Millar's The Disruption Generator. Now, if you're a listener to this podcast, you've noticed a running theme in the past couple episodes, and that has been the custom arcana bibliomantic oracle that I've been using to divine the episode art. Well, this will be somewhat of an unboxing and an exit interview uh, for a project I care deeply, deeply about. You see, Eric Miller created this bibliomantic oracular deck called the Disruption Generator. And it was birthed with the help of our art collective, We the Hallowed. Uh, we the hallowed.org. Uh, Monday through Friday for 120 days over the course of months, he would use a random word generator and illustrate that word while devising a succinct poetic definition for that card. Completely random without any of the pizzazz or hoopla of academic overthink, none of that stuff. And he would then post those illustrations or those cards on withahallowed.org. I am proud to have helped midwife this stunning project, if only just a little. And it means so much to me how absolutely synchronous this custom tarot has become. And... um I use it daily. I use it every day, not just for this show, but for a lot of ways. And we'll go over that in the second part of this episode. You've probably noticed the aforementioned episode art. Those are DG components. After every interview, I divine the episode art. I consult the uh, bibliomantic tarot, picking a couple of components from the book and uh, from my very rare card deck, which more on that later. And for this episode, I, I drew something I get a lot, and it's this, evolution. Now, this card has come up so much for me in the series of interviews and this podcast and the creative work I'm doing, but also in the idea of what the disruption generator is and what it means. Because boy, is it an inner alchemy, is it an inner evolutionary thing. Um, But more than just being able to use the brilliant illustrations, I've applied the arcana to my daily life. Uh, Whether it's a traditional three card reading or three component reading from the book, I use to kind of consult Uh, My psyche, I also use it creatively. If I get into a writing hole while I'm working on my my first novel, I get into a bit of a writer's block, I'll use it to kind of help inspire and prompt me out of such thing. And you'll hear many other ways to use this deck. Um, The DG... It it suffices to say the DG, or the Disruption Generator, has been absurdly relevant in the most metaphysical 
of ways. And, um, and it will be for you too. I know that. Uh, the project started with one overarching question, and that was what can true randomness do once installed into the divination thought form? And the results are in. I got to tell you, they are brilliant. So it came. So this is shipped directly from Eric himself, the creator, and that's taped pretty well. <sighs> Ooh. Oh, gotta be careful. Okay. All right. So this is the disruption generator hardcover. It is in a coffee table art book size. And oh, I just dropped an envelope. Um, I think that's something I'll get to in a second. Oh, these are beautiful. Here's a component. Arson. Oh, look at that. It's even got the We the Hollow sigil on the inside. Uh, pamphlet. It's beautiful. Oh, and the outlet press. Check this out. One of 50. And guess what? You can still get one. Uh, Eric agreed to elongate the uh, short run until August 2nd. So if you're listening to this after August 2nd, I'm sorry. But if you're listening to this before, you're in luck. Oh, but here it is. So if you get a hardcover, oh, look at that. If you get a hardcover, you get it not only signed, numbered, but you also get a custom sigil on the hardcover. And I dropped the envelope down here. Oh, there it is. So with the actual hardcover, you get a sigil and you get a reading. So here I am opening up the reading. Oh, wait, look at this. Look at the spine. I love that. It doesn't look good. All right. And so my reading, funny enough, so you get uh, a card or two from the original one of three of the actual decks made of the disruption generator. It was always meant to be a book. So the cards are super rare. And I got two, and it's a funny story why. And I think he mentions it in this reading. So let me read you my personal reading. And it says, Keats, this reading will be difficult, not because the ideas are vague, but because they are spot on and direct. I drew two cards because the first was too perfect to be believed. And the first draw was haunt. I get this card all the time. For those of you that follow We The Hallowed Our Art Collective, our nickname for members are haunts. So it's a little too apropos. Um, a word with deep meaning in We The Hallowed. The second was gate. Another draw with deep meanings. I think this means that this path, being a haunt, with, will open a gate to the future, to learning, to help yourself and others. This path is about openings and about the lingering presence left behind. Eric. So, isn't that special? That's just, it's remarkable. I, I can't, I'm, I'm just beyond words. Please, if you're listening to this, which I hope you are, before August 2nd, you can still get one of these beautiful limited edition hardcovers with a sigil, personalized sigil, personalized reading from one of three rare DG decks. And uh, if you're too late, never fear, because this project will live on in perpetuity, and you can get on Amazon, no matter when, a disruption generator portable. Very affordable, and it's just beautifully, all the illustrations are there. What's that one? Filter? Nice. Gargoyle, yeah. 
and you can pick this up on Amazon for the end until the end of time. So yours, you doing good, Zara? You good? Come here. That's all right. I'm just listening. So Zara and I highly recommend that you try to pick up a rare, extremely rare, out of fifty ever made hardcover disruption generator books. Use it for bibliomantic means. If you're kind of questioning what I mean by that, we'll go over it in the following interview after this. Um, so please join me as I reveal the most magical talisman I have ever had the pleasure of seeing sewed and discussing a little bit of the exit interview after this long, beautiful process that was the creation and the distribution of the disruption generator. And Zaro and I would like to thank uh, our patrons real quick, um, Alex Ballin, Eric Arneson, and Derek Hunter. Thank you so much for supporting what I do and what is happening here. If you'd like to help be a patron, we've got a bunch of fun stuff. You can do that at patreon.com slash we the hollowed. And it not only goes to me, it goes to projects such as the disruption generator, zines, um, film compilations, what have you. And without further ado, I'll just uh, play the wonderful exit interview I have with the disruption generator and outlet presses, Eric J. Millar. And with it, I'll show the components. Oh, and uh, haunt on. All right. All right, Eric Millar, and I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes, you are. Uh, this is what I'm considering to be like an exit interview of sorts, because you have been on this marathon run with the Disruption Generator, and I thought we could go over maybe some different ways people can use the Disruption Generator, talk a little bit about the hardcover, which I just unboxed on video, and that'll uh -huh. be preceding this uh chat and some other fun stuff but uh how are you feeling <laughs> I, i'm feeling a little exhausted yeah i mean i, I have been spending the last uh, i'm coming up on eight months with this thing that's that's the longest i've been with a project for almost my entire artistic life that's insane and i was pretty much there i think for for all of it in a way oh yeah oh yeah like the the main reason it even exists is because you made a call for people to join We the Hollowed. I mean, that's and, such a small part to play in such a beautiful work, but I am completely enamored and appreciative to be a part of this because boy, did it turn out pretty fantastically. It did. It did. I'm I'm even kind of impressed with how it turned out because it it was random from the start, so I didn't have any idea what it was going to look like when it was all said and done. So one of my favorite parts about listening to your interviews on other podcasts and listening to you go on this kind of promotional tour is having to discuss it because it in its inception was always supposed to be kind of antithetical to the academic, you know, understanding of divination and how you're supposed to use it and what you can do with it. So it's been fun hearing you kind of come up with ways to get around telling people how to use it yeah yeah it's it's been difficult I, I mean i've always kind of subscribed to the uh the david lynch philosophy of art where you don't tell people what your art's about right you just let people figure it out for themselves I and there's been little pieces where I've, I've like i feel like i've had to tell people what to do but i don't want to like i don't want anybody to feel like there's rules right and i think one of my favorite parts too is hearing you know our friends and other people in this community use it and it's just such in various fascinating ways. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the, the way people interpret things so differently, it's, it's amazing to hear. Some people are, I'm going to say some people are way better at reading this than I am. <laughs> I think, you know, too, like I have such a personal um, uh, relationship with it now, you know, I think it's like, yeah. it's not, so much that uh, I'm reading it that there's a form and function as it, it is very emotional for me in a way. Yeah. 
And I think that's well, like the best, most unadulterated way to have a relationship with art, you know? Yeah. And I really, I want people that use it to develop their own relationship with them. I want them to have like a sense of ownership over the entire proceeding. Like yeah. I don't own the process. They do. So let's talk about some of the ways uh, you've heard people use it. What are some of your favorite ways? Um, my favorite way right now is uh, Vanessa Kendall using it to uh, create a poetry book. Right. That is that is my absolute favorite. Yeah, um, she uh, she shared some of the pros for me. I'm just floored. Like, oh, me too, me too. Those are they're amazing. And like you using the cards for the uh, the show art. Right. Is, I've, I've, I've enjoyed that, too. So, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, so I, I think me and Vanessa are good entry points into how to use it for creative purposes. To, yeah. She also shared with me. Uh, so we've been talking about We the Hallowed, the organization, quote unquote, that, you know, helped uh, put this out, you know, the website and whatnot. Yeah. But the art collective as a whole and kind of coming together and reconstituting what I call the tethers, which is kind of, you know, the um, the scripture, quote unquote, of We the Hallowed. And she used the disruption generator to cast almost like an outline or an objective point list of what to do with the tethers. And it read incredibly. It did. It did. That was beautiful. Yeah. You shared that with me and that, yeah, that was amazing. I, I was very surprised at how well that worked out. I really want to use that as kind of the entry point into gluing all of our weirdness together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if it works, I'm more than happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so, yeah, I've been using it in a few different ways. Um, like you mentioned, I use it to, and thank you, you're basically providing me with free uh, episode art. <laughs> no, I mean, there's 120. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I figure like this season of the podcast, I've been using it to kind of, um, it's not really to cast an objective. And I, I do the cards after I do the interviews. And yeah. I swear to God, the last card, that's the third card I choose. And that's kind of what I go with, with the title of the episode, what the kind of overarching theme is for my commentary in the beginning and the episode yeah. art. And it is just uncanny. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been really accurate. And so I wanted to share with you right before we got on the phone, because we were talking about uh, some of the readings you've done with other people and I just did a quick one while we were talking earlier and it was kind of for the podcast and it was evolution mushroom and guru and I just thought like using evolution for the cover art for this episode would make so much sense oh yeah yeah Definitely don't use Guru because no. I don't want to be one of those. <laughs> well, and like you, and so this is the other great part with the disruption generator. There's, you know, it's up to the reader's interpretation, but you have very poetic and like beautiful, kind of quick descriptors that leave a lot up to the imagination, but are still kind of profound. And so, Guru, yeah, we were talking earlier, it does have some kind of dark connotations, but the disruption generator in its definition almost kind of leans towards more of the teaching aspect, but that in yeah. and of itself isn't good or bad, you know? So yeah, I enjoyed that. Well, that's, that's kind of similar. I, uh, when I did a single card reading for Derek Hunter, um, right. the card I drew for him was collar. And what I had drawn was a, an evil looking Catholic priest. <laughs> and it made me reevaluate the card, the, the art that I did because like he's a preacher of sorts, but it's more of like love, absolutely, and understanding and and learning. It's 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 a it's preaching in a positive way. So the, the collar, like as a preacher, still fit, but my connotation for it didn't at all. Yeah, that totally makes sense that he would get that card, and you know, uh, with his new work that's coming out, it's it's very much a arbiter of or like a herald of good things, not like yeah. dark preaching but yeah I, that makes so much sense and so i got the hardcover 
Mm-hmm. Finally opened this guy. It is so fucking beautiful. You just are such a great book designer alone um, that it just really elevates the work. And to hold it, and it's like a coffee table art book size, just fantastic. And yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of it, it was it wasn't much extra work from the soft cover, but I, it's definitely it's definitely a step up because there, there's the little flourishes on every page. Well, it's crazy, that yeah, because it works both in both sizes. I love the portable one. I mean, I you know have been using that for everything, yeah. and the fact that it's portable is perfect. But this hardcover, which is still up for pre-sale, um, it's a short run, and if you order it. You get um, a couple of cards from a very extremely rare uh, disruption generator deck, and that's your reading, right? Whoever buys the book, that's their reading. Yeah, and yeah. It's uh, whatever they, whatever their question is, that's going to be what I use to read. Is the uh, the deck that Alex Bolin printed when you guys did the first of- official disruption generator reading with the cards? Yeah, and they're. They're so much fun. And with mine was fucking hilarious. Because uh, mm-hmm. you shared with me kind of right away uh, before I got the book what my reading was going to be because it was just kind of profound. And so yeah. this one card through this entire process has just been punching me in the face. Uh, and it's Haunt, which is funny because in We the Hallowed kind of, you know, the collective that we're all working with, uh, the nickname for the members are haunts because the big ethos is the only way to kind of reach immortality is through art and ideas. Right. Right. And so you drafted haunt and you told me, (laughs) you were like, I'm doing this again. This is like, no one's going to believe this. (laughs) So I appreciated that. So you got, you gave me another one just in case. And it was gate, which I thought was profound as well. Well, yeah, especially put together. Yeah. I mean, like, I think, what did I say? That that uh, We the Hollowed is going to be your gateway to uh, learning and growing. And... and Yes, and to being a part of fucking wonderful works of art such as this. Yeah. I mean, it has just been such a pleasure to be around and to see the kind of what it takes and how much it's taken out of you. And how much people have run with it. It's just pretty, it's its amazing. And I can't say that enough. Yeah, I, I will definitely say this is the, the most spiritually and personally satisfying project I've ever worked on. I, uh, it's, it's just amazing. So, I am very ready to be done. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, you've it's, been it's, on the gamut. Yeah, this has been a, this has been a marathon for me. And it's been worth it. it. It's incredibly satisfying. But yeah, man, am I tired? Well, that's 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 what you want, right? You kind of want to get sick of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of want to get a little exhausted. I mean, that's that's where the real like, that's where the real trial is, you know. So, what's your relationship to it now? Is there one? Are you kind of past it? Um, for the most part, I'm kind of past it. Um, I don't really use it, but it feels like it's too close now. Like it feels almost like. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like almost like a part of my body. Yeah. It's just kind of there. It's it's like my – it feels like a spleen. Like I don't actively <laughs> use my spleen, but it's there. Yeah, it's nice to be a part of you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to remove it. Yeah, no, no, but no. It's, really. it's a pretty pretty essential <laughs> function still. So what are some other ways um, you've seen people run with this? Um. Well, it's been interesting, like the the thinking of different ways of reading the cards. That's been interesting to watch because um, Rune, one of the other members of the uh, of We the Hollowed, came up with an idea of using dice to come up with your components, and that's been amazing. It, it like adds like a role playing element to it almost. Right, and it's like the D and D twelve sided die. Yeah, it's a twelve sided die and a ten sided die, and. Uh, yeah, when I talked to Eric Arneson of Arnamancy, we uh, we used that quite a bit, and it worked out pretty well. Not for him, but it worked out pretty well for drawing uh, components. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty <laughs> epic uh, reading. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the most like profound readings you've you've heard? Has there have I'm sure people have reached out to you all the time. 
Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Um, yours have been the most profound, honestly. The ones you've been doing for the shows and just the way you've been running with them, um, those have been pretty profound. Yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know how much I want to share what other oh, people sure. have been working on. That's fair. That's totally fair. Yeah. Yeah, because like, I've been using it for all sorts of things, too. Uh, I've, I've discovered a good way to kind of, because since writing this book I'm working on, if I get mm -hmm. into a hole, it's like a good exercise for the subconscious to kind of climb out of it by drawing a component. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's been like your uh, like when Philip K. Dick wrote Man in High Castle, he used the I Ching whenever he got stuck. Yeah, exactly. What's funny though, uh, one once I was uh, I got into one of these holes. Uh, one of the cards I pulled was trap. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, see, it's oh. fucking with me now. Like, that's yeah, how yeah, close I am you. with it. Yeah. So, it's like a friend taunting you. <laughs> so after the hardcover is done, uh, you're going to be, you're going to just take some time for yourself, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right now, we're, uh, me and Alex Bowen are in a planning stage for, for a comic we're putting out. But other than that, I'm, I'm taking a little break. I've I've kind of been pushing a little little hard. I mean, it's it's been so worth it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can't wait to show or release this and have people see just how intricate the hardcover is and how personal it is with your uh, with your readings. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, the hardcover is definitely the ideal way to have it. Like, I mean, I wish. I wish I could have made it more affordable for people. Yeah. I mean, but, um, it's, it's, you know, it's short run. It's super special. I think it's yeah. totally affordable. Yeah. And I, I mean, I tried my best to like make it really like everybody's copy is going to be their copy. Like everybody gets a personalized sigil painted on the cover. I mean, I it's so nice. sign it in two different places. <laughs> Number it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cause the slipcover is supposed to be a poster. Oh, really? Yeah, it was supposed to be a poster. You just take it off the book and, like, having just the, 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 the regular black cover with the sigil on it, that's supposed to be the Holy cover. Holy shit. So, yeah, I'm it's actually an art now. print. Fuck, I gotta edit that video. <laughs> 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 well, I, show, I showed the, uh, the cover yeah. uh, because it's just it's so beautiful. But, yeah, that is so cool. I mean, I don't think I'll hang it. <laughs> keep it oh off. yeah I don't, I don't think anybody's gonna hang it <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'd want to maybe i'll like make a a scan of it or something but yeah that's yeah. awesome so let's talk a, a little bit about the heavy like what has this process shown or kind of revealed to you about maybe the artistic process the randomized element you know um well, as far as artistic process and randomization goes, it's uh, I just never really assumed that the art would lead me where it needed needed it to go. Like I always kind of let it go on its own, but I have a lot more faith not not just in my own process, but like in the the process of just creating. Like I think I've learned to trust just the act of creation more now than I ever have before. Yeah. And like, it's its own thing. Like if, if it, it feels like the, the act of creating became its own entity in the creation of this. And that felt pretty profound. Like I just, it, it felt like something was holding my hand through the entire thing. Yeah. That's incredible. Cause I, I mean, the whole point was to kind of maybe get away from the woo a little bit and it ended up, yeah. you know, yeah. there was no pretension, but. Yeah, they, it, they it pretty was... well dragged me right into the woo. Yeah. <laughs> so how has this affected maybe your project mind, you know, coming up? Um, Are you going to be a little it's... bit more like allowing of your hand to just do its thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've definitely I'm 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 having a struggle reining myself in and trying to do orderly art. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm very, very much like my brain at, at this point, just it, it, when I pick up a pen, my brain wants to 
turn off, not turn on. Right. So, yeah, that's been a little difficult. So this but, new uh, project with Alex is like a great uh, shift. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like a palate cleanser almost. <laughs> yeah, it's like you unlocked a monster, an automatic art yeah. monster. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Well, it just it turned out so wonderfully. Um, it's still profound to me. I will continue to use it daily as I have been. I will continue sharing uh, my reads for oncoming episodes. Uh, I'd like to maybe sometime in the future through We the Hollowed is collect your essays and maybe other people's writings about it. And Oh, I would love that. I, I mean... People should come and like come and like if if anybody has anything on the disruption generator, come to us and send it in. Yes. Like I I want to see people work with it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put a call out. If you are using the disruption generator, write about it and tell us. We'll post it on We the Hallowed. Oh yeah, for sure. I I, I want to see people do work with it. I want to see what people do with it. It's. It's amazing. It's not meant to be just left alone. It's not just a tool that you pick up and use. I want you to I want people to show their work. Like that said Like any good teacher, I want people to show their work. <laughs> you're a guru. No, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh I was just going to say, have you seen that uh people are using it more for constructive creative purposes or or like is there a lot of actual kind of div divination going on too? It's it seems like it's been pretty uh, a pretty solid just split yeah. between creation and divination and a little bit of uh, I think some people have been using it for a meditative practice. They're using it as a focus during meditation. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's been pretty cool. That would be pretty profound. But, yeah, I would hate to end up with one of the more negative cards to meditate on for the well, day. But, I was going to say, that's probably the, the ones that I would need to so that they don't riddle my day you know what i mean yeah yeah well i mean you could treat it a, a lot like a memento mori or something where yes. you're thinking about the negative and maybe that will help dispel it because i could meditate on blueberry all day but i'm not sure like yeah that that'll yeah. vex too much you know yeah even though it is i don't know a if i could part. actually meditate on blueberry all day <laughs> that would be kind of tough i so when we first started talking about this you were bringing up you know, because people are like, wow, these words are random. The cards are super random. The, mm -hmm. You know, you get blueberry, like, and you mention that card all the time. But the more and more I think about it, like, that card becomes more and more profound to me. And it's actually oh, yeah. one of the few cards that I, I, like, continually think about, you know? Yeah, yeah, between that one and Bucket. Yes, like, yeah. Bucket has, has a new profound meaning to me. And I, I never really thought of it as almost like a symbol for a working man, but it kind of is. <laughs> you know, it's amazing because um, back in my train hopping days, that was a like tool of the trade. Like you yeah. carried a bucket with you and it, it was such a symbol of someone kind of freewheeling. This is the only tool they, they truly needed, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you can sit on it. You can put your stuff in it. Yep. It can be a toilet. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's kind of everything. So, what else? What have have we have you not been able to address in, in this like podcast crusade? Oh man, um, there's really not much I can think of that I haven't talked about that I that I want to talk about. Yeah. Like, I still want there to be, like, a level of mystery about it, and I want people to, like, kind of decode it on their own. Yeah. Um, I know there was something that I couldn't think of at uh, in a previous podcast, but I cannot think of it now. Well, so. I do want to quickly mention that it was always meant to be a book. So it was always meant to be a bibliomantic oracle. Because you get yes. questions a lot about, you know, I, I've even asked you like oh maybe you should do a deck um but that's not yeah. the point yeah yeah it has it has always meant to it was always meant to be a book and like books have like a very deep and spiritual connection like i have a very deep connection with books 
Like they've always been there is whenever I've moved anywhere, the books are the first things I unpack. Yeah, me too. No matter what, they're like a big security blanket. It's like I they're familiar faces to me. So books have been just this constant companion to me for most of my adult life. And the act of creating books is a very deep, meaningful experience to me. So, And funny and enough, I, isn't this your 23rd? I believe so, yeah. How You can't write this shit. No. Number 23. But yeah, you yeah. have, you have a, a shelf in my place. I don't think I have all 23, but... Oh, nobody does. Yeah. Nobody does. <laughs> I've, put, I've put at least a half dozen of those out of print because uh, they're not good. <laughs> yeah, I heard you mentioning somewhere else that you had some that under a different alias too, right? Yeah, yeah. And they, those only sold one copy each in Britain. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know why they bought them or who they thought I was. I've had but... albums like that. Like, I've had albums that only sold handfuls but in, like, Germany and Denmark. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. It's a little unnerving to know that I can't communicate with the person that's listening to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a uh when I when I used to write for a blog, I uh had a fan in South America that would constantly write comments, but he would never answer my replies. But he was like this big fan of my writing and it was like how are you even reading this? How did you even find me? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the magic of uh, international sales. Yeah. Well, the question was always, what can true randomness do when installed into oracular divination? And I think you've gotten such a cornucopia of answers. Yeah. Yeah, that I did not know how much of a Pandora's box that was. That, that question became much bigger. I mean, for you, for everyone, I've I've learned a yeah. lot just being adjacent to this project about the value in in randomness and and letting uh, your mind go. Yeah, yeah. I think more people should try just random work. Yeah. It's it's a very freeing experience. You know, there's always a part of me that wants to burn the motherfucker down, you know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I always appreciated that this work came from an unacademic place. And yeah. has become somewhat more profound than the traditions that I have employed or experienced, you know. Yeah. So really appreciate your work sir this is has been just such a fantastic journey and we've got more work to do oh yeah yeah and and thank you you've been a very important part oh i've been uh, we the hollowed has and you have you but you've been my biggest cheerleader all through i mean so. it's such yeah it's if anything like this this work has really spoken to me and i'm just so appreciative to be any part of it and I think this is the beginning of, you know, many, many wonderful projects. Oh, yeah. And is there, I mean, happy rest, happy take <laughs> a load off. Uh, you know, we'll keep pushing it however we can because we love it. And is there any kind of parting words for the project? Oh, wow. Um, not really. Not really. I think it speaks for itself. Yeah. I think I, like, I think it is it, it is its own final words. In quotations, um not really. Yep. <laughs> you can perfect. quote me on that. <laughs> that says everything too. Yep. <laughs> All right, Eric. Well, good hearing your voice. Um and we'll talk soon, as I'm sure yeah. we do. Definitely. All right, man. Take care. You too.